In this snippet, we're going to talk about state management in Flutter using the Dart provider package. And this is a really nice, easy way to get started with state. Most of the time, even if you're building a large application, you don't need a complex state management strategy. So we're just going to focus on using provider. I'm going to assume that you've never heard of it. You've never used it before. And we're going to go and switch over the default app that we get when we create a new Flutter project, which is that counter app. And if you follow some other courses we have on Flutter, you'll be very familiar with this. So let's go ahead and create a new Flutter project and I'm gonna call this provider counter. Like I said, we're gonna be using that default counter app. And what we're essentially gonna do is just switch this over to use uh, state management rather than using the set state function, which you may be familiar with. So let's go and just place this inside of a folder so let's go to tutorials and flutter and create this in here and we'll basically just wait for flutter to create this project for us and then we'll boot up our emulator okay so our project's all created let's uh, go and start this without debugging and i'm just going to use a device here which is a pixel device let me just bring this over here so we can keep an eye on this once this is up and loaded we can start to switch things around Okay, brilliant. Our demo app is up and running. And as you can see, this is working as we would expect. Perfect. Now, like I said, at the moment, what we're using is a stateful widget and we're using the set state function to increment the counter variable that we have here, which of, of course is by default zero. And what that is doing is every time we call set state, it's going ahead and refreshing the widgets that use this. So in this case, this value here is changing. So of course we see the widgets refreshed and the number incremented reading from that new incremented value. So the first thing that we're gonna do is head over and install provider and then we'll look at a few things that we need to get this working. So let's come over to the installation section and grab the dependency in the current version. We're gonna come over to pubspec.yaml and we're gonna come under our dependencies section, paste this in, save this, and that will go ahead and automatically install that for us. And once that is finished, we can start looking at how this works. Now, the first thing that we need is a counter model. So I'm just gonna come up here and create a counter model. And this is a very, very simple example, but this will at least get you started. Now, inside of this counter model, we are gonna store the value of the counter. So I'm just gonna call this value, and of course, I'm gonna type in this to an integer. And then we're gonna create out, if we come down here, a function which will increment this value. So on its own, this isn't gonna to do too much at the moment. It will just simply increment that value, and that is pretty much it. So with this new counter model or class that we've created, this needs to be a change notifier. Now, the way that state management is gonna work with provider is inside of here, when we increment this, we're gonna notify any listeners that are listening to this particular value, and then we'll implement the listeners inside of our widgets, so then widgets can subsequently be refreshed. So this counter needs to extend the change notifier uh, class. So once we've done that, we now have something that can notify our listeners. Now we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves now, but what we can actually do is call this notify listeners method uh, or function, and that's going to notify them listeners, which I spoke about a second ago. Okay, so at the moment our app has no idea uh, what we're registering to notify our widgets inside of here. So we need to make uh, a couple of changes to our main function just here where we run our app. What we're going to implement is a change notifier provider. This is going to provide our application with a list potentially, in this case it's just going to be one thing, that notifies the rest of our application. And you're going to want to place this as high up as required. And in most cases, this will be when we run our app. So we're going to put this state listening at the very top of our application. You don't always want to do that for larger applications, so that's not going to be the case. But we're just looking at a very simple example for now. So instead of calling my app, which is of course this stateless widget just here, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to instead from this return a change notifier provider. And inside of here, the child of this will be the app that we want to render. Now inside of this, to actually give ourselves the list of items or potential list of items 
uh, that we want to listen out for, we are going to implement a builder. We get our context just in here, but in this case, it's very, very simple. We just want to say, well, counter is something that is a change notifier and will potentially notify any listeners in our application. So that's not done much. Let's just give the whole app a refresh here just to make sure that we didn't break anything. And you can see that this is working in exactly the same way. Now, the widget here doesn't actually have to be a stateful widget. We can just use this as a stateless widget uh, and we don't need to implement this stateful stuff. I'm not going to do that now, but in future when we when you are implementing this, it doesn't need to be a stateful widget in order for this to work. OK, so let's come down to just have a look at some of this. If you're not familiar with the simple app that you get when you create a new Flutter project, uh, we have our state just here. And like I said earlier, we're calling the set state method to get this to kind of refresh the widgets. Now, we don't need this anymore. So let's get rid of the increment counter method and let's get rid of this counter variable just inside of here, because we know that now the counter value is being stored inside of this counter model just here. And let's just take a look at this value here. We're going to kind of ignore this now. So what I'm going to do is actually hard code this into zero. And we want to talk about what happens when we press this value. So uh, in fact, let's leave that for now and let's create an empty method in there. So we don't want to do anything when that's pressed. And let's look at the actual counter value first of all. And we're going to talk about a consumer. Now a consumer is something, it's another widget where you wrap other widgets within it, which will listen for particular values and then refresh just them widgets. So essentially we can wrap anything inside of a consumer. This is basically just what's going to listen out for a state change on our counter when we call that notify listeners function. So we don't need to refresh this text. We just need to refresh this text here whenever that counter value changes. So I'm going to cut this out of here and I'm going to go ahead and pull in that consumer. Now it's really important that we type in this to a counter so our uh, application knows what we're actually listening for. Otherwise, we could be listening to any kind of state. So let's go and inside of here, pull in our builder. And inside of here, we get three things. We get the context, we get the counter model itself or the counter class itself, and any child elements, which we don't need to discuss just here. So inside of here, then we want to go ahead and return that text. So let's just pull this in, indent it, and go ahead and give that return value. And that's going to listen for any time that notify listeners function is called. What it will then do is give us access to the entire counter. So once we increment it, the value will be incremented. Counter will uh, have its value changed inside of there. And then this consumer will pick up on any of them changes. So if we just save this out, Nothing's going to have changed. Again, we can just refresh the app just to make sure. Of course, when we press this increment button now, nothing's actually going to happen because we've not done anything inside of on pressed. But when we do go ahead and modify that value, the consumer here will be notified. It knows it's listening out for a counter. We'll get the counter objects inside of here and therefore we can grab the new value. So the question now is, and the last step really here is, how do we increment the counter value? Well, you may think, well, maybe we could just call counter and then the increment method. Let's just take a look at what happens when we do that. So let's save this out and I'm actually going to convert this over like so. And let's just see what happens when we do this. So I'm going to go ahead and press this and it looks like at the moment nothing is happening. So the way that we do this then is we use provider. We say of, we tell it what we're trying to do. Uh, or, or what model or what class we're trying to use. And then we go ahead and pass in our application context. Then we go ahead and call that increment method. So what that's now going to do, if we just save this out, we're going to call the increment method over on our counter. That's going to increment the value which we're reading inside of our consumer. We're going to notify listeners. Once we've notified our listeners, if we come down here, the consumer will be able to render that value. Now, I've just realized that what I did do a minute ago when I showed you how to call this by saying counter.increment, that wouldn't have worked anyway because I'd hard coded this value in here. So let's just see what happens when we do say counter.value and we'll see 
if we just cast that to a string or put it inside of uh, back ticks, what happens? So I'm going to go ahead and click this and you can see still nothing is happening. We're not seeing any errors in our debug console, but nothing is happening. So just to be clear, that's not going to work. So let's bring back the code that we had just a minute ago, save that out. I'm just going to refresh the app in its entirety just to make sure it's up to date. And I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And sure enough, you can see that every time I increment this, what is happening is exactly what we just explained. So just to go over this once again, at the top of our app, we're saying that our change notify provider is giving us this counter. So inside of this counter now, we can use notify listeners once we've done something inside of here. And this could be a list of items uh, that you want to render out in a list. And this could be to add an item, delete an item, update an item. It doesn't matter what you're doing inside of here. As long as you call notify listeners, anytime that you use the consumer down here, that will notify you of anything that's happened inside of the app. And you'll get that model or list of models or list of things inside of here, ready to go ahead and pull back the value. So again, what we've done here is we've used our provider using the counter to call that increment method and update it. So that's just a really basic look at implementing provider. Once you've nailed this very, very simple implementation, as you start to look more into using provider, this will make total sense. These are the core concepts of provider that you need to know in order to start building larger applications where you have much better state management.